Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 181. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're excited to be welcoming back our good friend, Matthew Wolf, and the award-winning writer and author of the widely acclaimed fantasy series, Ronin Saga. Thank you. So, Matt, you're here, but you're not talking about the Ronin Saga. No, I'm not. I'm being yeah. I'm, I'm misleading. <laughs> well, we're saga, and then I talk about something entirely different. <laughs> but this is exciting. So you are you're coming out with a a a, a brand new a brand new book called mm-hmm. Sky Thief, mm-hmm. which is book one of the Realm Walker series, and this is going to be launching as of this recording. This is going to be launching fairly soon, correct? Correct. You're looking to be July nineteenth, and that's the first time I've let anyone know a hard date. Ooh, okay. Um so yeah, you got the insider scoop, and uh, yeah, July nineteenth, it'll run for thirty days, and then you will be able to get the book. November will be the first Kickstarter books that will be shipped, and then the okay. general public will get them uh, probably like January. Um, so wow. about two months ahead of time, for the general public. So yeah, it's getting it's- close. The Sky Thief. This is all done, right? And it's printed. Book one is done. We're in the editing okay. process. Uh, okay. Looks like we're about. So it usually it takes like a year and a half, two years to write, uh, and then about four or five months of editing. So we're about two months in that. So about two, about another month, month or two of actual finishing up the editing process. Um, okay. This is the first time I ever released something without being done on the editing side. Um, but it's really good, and it's cleaner than any book I've seen before. So it's it's pretty much like um, automated almost at this point. I just have to get my um, line editor to go through it, and mm-hmm. so yeah, it's done. It's ready. It's, I'm excited. So I'm uh, I'm really curious to see how people dive in and what they think of Skyfi. So your fans that might be listening to this, like listening and, and we're watching this, I'm just saying, you know, you know, Matt, we've been waiting for book five of the Ronin Saga, and then. Then you surprise us with a completely different book. Um, okay. So, the so guilt, I get so, to the answer their question. So, yeah, the yeah. Guilt, so the what's going on? So, what what what's the what's the shift for? So there's a, so there's a lot of reasons. Um, it's a really good question. Mm-hmm. So, um, one was that it, it sucks too because it has nothing to do with a. My, I'm very I love every, all the, the characters. Of the saga are just. I plotted out book five and I was about 30% into it and I was just crushing it. And I was like having so much fun, everything speaking to me so clearly. And I'm so inspired. There's no, no game of Thrones, no Patrick Rothfuss. I, I like, I'm really, I love the saga more than anything, but two things happened. One was that I had a lot of, um, I had, I had an agent reach out to me and they're like, Hey, look, we love the saga. Um, your your sales are really good, but we, we were wondering if you had anything on the side. And then they're like, I was like, yeah, I do have something on the side. And they're like, well, could you send it over? And mm. uh, I was like, well, I'll write up a quick synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> and that didn't, that's not how it's, that's not how it ended. I just, I started writing a synopsis. And the next thing I know, I was just started writing a chapter. And then I had another chapter. Oh, wow. and another chapter. Okay. I was just, I was 30% in a book five and I was just in totally enamored with this, this this new idea and it's just so interesting to something so fresh but at the same time still so much in the far haven universe because i didn't want to be like by the way i'm writing you know a you know a harlequin romance i want to pe- i want people to still be you know and hey look far haven still alive but I'm, i want to do something that's um so that was part of it was just this agent reaching out and being like hey what else do you got oh, okay. there and then the second part and the greater part is that, like, the truth is that the, each book is getting better from my, you know, bias included. But, like, I love I love book one. A lot of people love book one. But book two, they go to World of Farhaven. They, the, the characters are so much more complex. Uh, there's much – it's just – you grow as a writer. So right. what happens is that if someone, you know, ever read – didn't like book one or was, like, eh, on the fence about book one, they're never going to read this amazing book four or amazing book five. You right. Know? Um, right. so that's what Sky Thief is. It's an entrance into for people who, 
who have maybe heard of the saga or haven't heard of the saga, but I have developed so much as a writer. And also it's just kind of a different, just a different entry into it. So right. originally I was going to be a little bit more kind of clandestine with revealing that the saga and Sky Thief Realm Walker is related. But so you're going to like at the very end of Sky Thief, everyone's going to be like, oh my God, this is a Far Haven world. And they're going to be like, well, I guess I should go pick up the Ron Saga. <laughs> Uh, but I now now it's pretty I'm just like, hey, by the way, guys. So, but it's been hard, like on Patreon and all these different channels. I'm like, hey guys, Sky Thief's almost out. And every time I post, I think a little bit like I'm like, like, are you like everyone's so supportive and so excited. So I've that's really awesome. Excited. But yeah. at the same time, I'm like, I know this isn't book five, and uh, and don't worry, that's so alive. And so I'm hoping to get to the status of like a Sanderson kind of person where you can be like, okay, like he's got Stormlight Archives and he's doing Mistborn and other things. And when you're prolific enough, fingers crossed, eventually you're like, okay, like that's, that's on the burner. That's not going anywhere. Uh, let's just keep expanding your repertoire um, in, in, the, in the Cosmere and the universe. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of, that makes sense. Those kind of those three points. It was the agent, um, the bringing people in who may love book two, three, four, but are kind of, we're on the fence about maybe book one growing right. as writer and now uh and just just and just the inspiration of how much fun sky thief has been so far um doing something totally different is kind of it's kind of interesting the the, the last thing i'll say on this um, is progression fantasy is kind of my buddy kyle kieran um you you really like him He's such a nice guy he's came out with a series called shade slinger okay hugely popular um he's like I don't know, 4,000 or 5,000 Amazon reviews and, and just, just crushing it. Um, he messaged me and was like, hey man, you are crushing in fantasy. It's a giant ocean. But the very fact that you do as well as you do in such a giant ocean that is fa general fantasy is phenomenal. So, you, But I'm doing progression fantasy and you should join in or uh, he's doing kind of lit RPG. And um, so that's actually Sky Thief is actually a progression fantasy. So the algorithm on Amazon is so much more friendly to something that's not saturated like fantasy. So as a result, um, I'm getting both. I'm doing, I'm, I'm bringing in this very uh, productive and, and helpful algorithm on Amazon for progression fantasy. And I'm also um, tying it into the mm. fantasy world. If that makes sense. So, so listeners or viewers that might be you know driving in their car or or, or taking a jog well I'm kind of saying progression fantasy hmm. matthew tell us more so how would you describe progression fantasy good question so progression fantasy is the newest kind of genre it started from lit rpg which as a lot of people know is basically fantasy that's um in a kind of video game-esque kind of undertone it doesn't necessarily have to be but it's a lot of times like someone you know puts a um a lot of people who watched um oh, i'm blanking on the it's name like now but ready player one yeah like ready player one exactly some sort of like headgear vr right. thing on and they transport into new world progression fantasy is kind of less about it's about more like falling into a new world mm. um it could be a portal it could be um could be simply so progression fantasy is uh <laughs> um is basically advancement and ranking up in a system so like okay. it's there's a few requirements number one is that a character is constantly progressing with as, as the name is kind of self-evident so they are and usually it's shown in some sort of like they start as a copper they go to a silver they go to a gold um, okay. They go to like a Lord realm. And so there's a very like advancement system. Um, it's not so much. And then there's a few different kind of branches off. There's a Western side and then there's this kind of Eastern side where the Eastern side is like, they harness their um, chi and their internal energy and they do meditation and they do that kind of stuff to advance and become stronger as a person. So that's kind of the thing. Number one is some sort of like very clear definitive advancement. Number two is that the character's motives and per, like they are hungry to get stronger. They just mm -hmm. never stop advancing. 
whereas fantasy you can have a lot of like moments where they like they doubt themselves and there's there can be doubt in progression fantasy but generally they're like a steamroller just constantly getting stronger faster advancing um you even see glimpses of what they could become um there's another series called um, cradle series by will white and the final form is like these cosmic uh judges that can obliterate planets with a swing of their blade you know and so you see this character who's an ultimate underdog um who basically has no can't you know can't ca cast a, a can't light a candle and at the very end they're going to be obliterating planets so it's like this really really fun uh how did they get to that that, that area so, but, but isn't that something your, your characters in, in Ronin Saga could technically fit within progression fantasy then too, right? Yeah, it's a little nebulous of a term because, right. you know, like Grey advances and he gets stronger, obviously. And we see like right. how Gale, totally, totally, very true. Um, the other, I think I think the clear ranking is kind of, the, is one of the main um, deviations from it. It's like how... I need to, how they're getting stronger, but when Gray gets stronger, he's a Ronin and he gets stronger as Ronin. And we can see now instead of being able to like lift up uh, a wagon, he can like lift up, you know, like, I don't know, like toss aside a whole army, you know, with, with, with the power of the wind. Well, not quite. But uh, so, but where this one, it's like, oh, I know he's stronger because he literally had to like, one of the things that happens a lot of in these advancement sagas, they will go through some sort of like purging when they go to the next rank. So from like a silver to gold rank, they'll actually like the toxins of their body will be purged out and they'll purify themselves and they're like, their skin will get hardened and they'll, he their healing will advance. And, and it's just a very like clear delineation of how, uh, how to get stronger. But so it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like lit RPG with leveling but without saying leveling, if that makes sense. Because there's just a lot of like, I think lit RPG is becoming less popular and more stigmatized because it's kind of like a lot of people are like, I don't know if I want to like read a video game novel. Right. Um, progression's trying to be, I think the bridge between those two. So would this, would, would you do something along the lines of actually, especially, especially with Sky Thief, would you contract with someone to make a supplement role-playing game for this i would love to do that one of the things so there's so many ideas with the new like, kickstarter coming out right and this is gonna be one of the biggest ones yet but there's i would probably want to do something that's super popular is these D, &D like one shots or dd compendium and uh -huh. i've had so many cool artists come up to me and be like hey look like i'd love to do art for the saga and i'm like there's only, you know, I want to illustrate the, the heck out of a, out of my, my book, but I'm, it's, then it's going to be a graphic novel, you know, um, right. which we're going to be doing a lot in Sky There's a lot of really cool art like you were showing, which, really, uh, which was great. But one of the things I'm going to do is first I was thinking, oh, I'm going to do d and I'm going to do a compendium. So I'm going to show, you know, the Farhaven universe. I'm going to show right. sprites and dryads and dragons and all stuff. But now I think I want to do... Uh, like it, like you just said, like a D and D one one off for either Sky Thief or for for the Ronin Saga. I think it'd be really cool to show like a choose your own adventure quest, uh, and they've been super popular on um, on uh, on crowdfunding for people to check that out and kind of get into right. that. I think that's probably the next time. So, what are some of the things that you're able to do in Sky Thief in your uh, in in this series that you that you've never been able to do in the Ronin Saga series? Good question. So one of the things that I can do, I said that really, they are a good question. Um, one of the things that I've been able to do, aside from just apply my new better writing, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no writer, you know, you evolve, like better is, is relative. You know, a lot of people love book one. Um, I honestly think that, you know, not smack talk, I'm not going to name any specific series, but some people's book ones as writers are actually somehow end up sometimes being better because um, they, I don't know. They just are simpler and they're like, they're not trying, they're not trying to be highfalutin and all this. But anyway, um, one of the things I was able to do was explore a character who actually starts in a modern world. Okay. So he actually starts in kind of a dystopian 
new New York, um, which was super weird to write a character who lives in kind of our times, future, you know, kind of apocalyptic version of it. And uh, immediately get him out of there because I don't want to sit. I'm, I'm all about a fantasy world. So he immediately falls through a portal and uh, kind of this um, uh, this pool into a new realm, kind of grassy, verdant, classic, neo fantasy realm. Um, but there's a few things that were, were kind of cool and different. One, now I can, when he references things, Dren is kind of this, the main character is kind of this uh, irreverent, rap scallion you know 18 year old thief which i always love but everyone's favorite character in the run saga is darius and he's always making jokes at the wrong time and he's just you know so i was like i'm just gonna recreate like a different version of darius because <laughs> it's just super fun to have these kind of sassy characters who don't who want to avoid responsibility but always end up doing the right thing right. matt Coffin from wheel time is one of my favorite examples of that um so one, I can now have these characters, I can have, I, I like that character. So I, that's kind of, I like Gray as a character. I think he's a great classic, like Harry Potter-esque kind of character where you're like, they're honorable and they try to do the right thing. Um, and they have, you know, moments of quirks, but they're not like quirky throughout. So it's kind of fun to explore a entirely new, different main, main character. Um, it's also cool to have him reference things and think in terms that way we think. When you write a fantasy character, Gray can't be like, man, my, I was running so fast, my arms were pumping like battery acid. Dren can do that because we live in a world. So I, it, it opens up the world uh, for, for some of the writing things and metaphors and all that. Um, and then the last thing is that um, I was able to explore, I was able to set up the world differently. So I'm not necessarily being super, I'm being a little mysterious on where Sky Thief takes place as far as relative to the Ronin Saga, um, whether it's another dimension, whether it's another planet, you know, farther away, whether it's, it's, I'll say this, it's not really so much the times kind of actually end up overlapping a little bit. Okay. Um, but one of the things is there's, there's this giant world tree. And I love, I've always been fascinated with by Yggdrasil world tree of the Norse mythology. And so I just thought this was so cool. It was originally a totally different idea, but he has to climb this world tree. Um, and I just love this tower climbing um, world where exactly, perfect segue. And so now he, like, he has to start in the land of Heron and then go on to Ten uh, and then to Vara and then to Sanctum. And so there's these four different realms um, that he begins in. Heron's kind of a Norse Viking-esque culture uh green rolling verdant hills and and then the, each of the cultures is uh, based on that too so you'll have uh you know the creatures in in heron are like these you know giant wolves and you know mm. sea serpents and stuff like that that are very norse esque but then when you go above you can actually see in uh the the realm above in 10 these kind of uh sky eels you know kind of uh, dipping beneath the cloud surface for this kind of Asian realm that that that, mm. that is ten, uh, and then Vara is kind of um, an Indian uh, realm, and they're all kind of loosely based on this idea of like it originally started because I wanted to base each of these cultures on the idea of kind of pseudo reincarnation, um, right. and it's veered away a little bit from that, and so reincarnation is not quite as prevalent of a theme in this, uh, and then ultimately Sanctum is the highest. This is kind of like celestial god tier realm which is fairly mysterious and what is up there um huh. but yeah so, yeah l l let me let me ask you this other one. so as you're you know the first book's done it's kind of getting edited and get ready to go mm -hmm. as you're writing this and, and because you have another successful series of ronin saga are there characters that you just can't wait to see if they can meet someday out of the two books or anything like that yeah a hundred percent i think it's gonna be you know you know it's funny i haven't thought about it too much but i'm like because it's a little bit away but like i i can't i think when people get enamored because you know far you know far haven the run saga is fairly established and they know Faye and certain right. but Faye meeting dren like certain characters that i already know so well having written sky thief I think it's just going to be so fun and interesting and fascinating. I'm like, they're going to be this beautiful oil and water, you know, mixture. That's, that's going to be so fun to, to portray. Wow. And so what, 
how does, as you mentioned, kind of like a, a, a magic type system, is there, is there any equiv- equivalence or, or anything like that on like that, the fantasy level? Is there a um, equity among the magic systems between the two places? Yeah. So there, you'll see that they're, they're different in the sense that like when Dren in Sky Thief advances, he does have like, he literally goes copper and then elder copper and then silver and elder silver. And that's the kind of like advancement system. And when he does, but you'll notice very quickly on that it's very elemental based. Um, whereas, so as we know, um, so you'll see, oh, well, wait a second. Like I, and, and I also wanted to explore the elements that haven't really been touched on from a main character's perspective in Sky Thief. So where gray has wind in, um, in Sky Thief, Dread has Moon, and Moon is really fascinating. And so we're gonna, you know, see Moon in Farhaven in the Ronan Saga universe for the main, for the for the run of Moon there. But I, I really thought it'd be cool to explore it in a different sense, in a different world, and how it's used. You kind of begin to wonder, like, okay, well, um, fire can still shoot fireballs, and sun right. can still, you know, shoot blasts, you know, rays of sun. But we know that in the Farhaven universe, there's a lot of different um, unique ways of doing it. So, for instance, Moon is going to be able to do things um, like play with the idea of gravity a little bit. Um, it's also going to be able to do things like uh, open up a portal of Moon that can kind of like, if anyone's ever played the game Portal, you know, reach your hand through this kind of sphere of this this thing of Moon to grab a dagger, you know, that was you know laying on a, a table nearby and pull it out and you know use it to attack his foe or whatever. So it's going to be kind of a fun, unique way. And you go, wait a second, is this something that is easily done in Farhaven? Um, are they more advanced than Farhaven's kind of ranks and worlds? Um, so yeah, very much elemental. Um, but then there's some other kind of takes on it too. Um, but yeah, so the Dre, Grant, and then and then there's a little bit of uh, technology undertone. Uh, I believe we were, we were chatting about it. I showed you some... There's like an arsenal glove that he has because he begins in this kind of new New York world. So he ends up having these kind of certain aspects exactly. So he can like use this thing and it, and it gets stronger and advances and grows in the beginning. In the oh, beginning, cool. okay. that's more like an arsenal arm. Um, but in the beginning, it's just a glove. And then it goes longer and bigger and stronger as it kind of levels up and advances. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so he has this... And it even has this kind of like you see the grappling hook there thing, so it can like use his grappling hook and you know eventually put like different little nodules inside of it. So like variations, you know, one's gonna be a grappling hook, um, one might be kind of a web or something like that. You know, I won't play too much Spider Man, but like different kind of ways that he can kind of access his glove. And so, so yeah, there's little technological pieces that he's taken from the other world, uh, including hover boots. Um, and and some of because everyone likes some good Zelda Ocarina of Time, but that's true. And yeah, and yeah, and I we did see the hover boots as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to play with that. It's not the final version, but I want to do like some. Yeah, there's like those little boosters. Um, but I want to do like yeah, the wings and the kind of everything. Where the Chinese version uh, of or the kind of yeah Eastern version of of progression fantasy is that it's all about like taking a like pill or um some sort of elixir or something to advance there's some of that in this i'm 50 percent internal advancement and 50 percent item advancement if that makes sense okay yeah. so the things that he has make him stronger and the stuff that he does i, I think both are cool um so yeah. all right so what are as you mentioned before is like you know this is this is not your fifth book um, what are some tips that you could give to writers? Uh, what are some of the things that you specific advice that you could give to writers who that that you wished you knew on your first book that you've now implemented in your fifth book? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I would say that with the fifth book and with Sky Thief, the thing that I've most learned is to have a main character who you know inside out. Okay. So the more, I think part of the problem with 
writing my first book was I had an idea of what would be cool, you know, which is great. That's how you started. Like, what would be cool? All oh, the Ronin Saga. What would be cool? Elements, but I haven't heard of the element of flesh or metal before. All that's great. And these are kind of like the little sifting for nuggets thing. And I always talk about it like your nuggets that you're panning for gold and you're like little nugget of gold, little nugget of gold. So right. that was my original way. But I realized it's hard to write a story with just nuggets of gold because you don't really have like, you don't know how it's all going to tie together. So for the biggest thing for me was, Dren and Gray and Faye is only when I got into book two and three and four did I really feel like my characters were telling the story versus me telling the story. So I feel like knowing your characters and ha and having your characters have a distinct personality um, and arc, of course, um, really will set you up. Everything else falls in place. When I knew okay. what Dren wanted, his motivation to climb the world tree, to stop Marcus Talon, this trillionaire guy who's from a different realm, to um, to stop him from from kind of destroying this world, from trying to steal this Seraph's key, this ultimate um, Pandora's box that will open up, you know, give give him ultimate power. Um, and then and then I knew his kind of sassy, you know, reverent character. Um, it just became it became really clear. It became like a golden line that even when i got sidetracked or writer's block or whatever i was like well dren's gonna pull me through this because i know what he wants and i know who he is right so uh, um, so so now we're talking about the kickstarter what are some of the new and different things that you're trying with this kickstarter as compared to your other ones yeah so i really wanted this one big um so there's a lot more illustration oh, wow. um you'll notice there'll be some stretch goals and stuff like that you know obviously inside we're doing a lot of like sketches like you saw a ton more than that um it's kind of leonardo da vinci things that will kind of really expand the world um we're also going to be doing depending how things go um kind of just more special editions so they're just your classic paperbacks hardcovers but then there's going to be special editions that are going to be really like gold foil and boss because i think that's what's so special about kickstarter is that like you can get something that you can't get anywhere else. And I can do a print run of a thousand or 2000 or whatever, these small print runs of these books for these truly avid readers um, that want to get an edition that's really, you know, unique and it's never going to be done again uh, for a great price and ahead of schedule. Um, the other stretch goal, I think for our stretch goal number two is going to be um, parchment maps we're going to be doing mm -hmm. of Sky Thief. So you saw the maps. So you're going to be able to get those, which I think is going to be cool. Um, and I might do some other, like, I might actually do little recreations of the Arsenal Glove and stuff like that people can have in, like, kind of parchment or faux leather. Um, and then we're also looking to do some other, and then there's some merch things that are kind of depending. I'll probably pull everyone and see what everyone likes. But the classic... Um, um, we did the challenge coins, which were really cool last time for Farhaven, the nine coins and the kind of metal. But I'm thinking of doing for Sky Thief. Um, I've been asked this a lot for Farhaven, but gamer pads, those like kind of uh, um, gamer mats. Okay. So, um, so that's another one. So, I mean, some of these things are almost their own Kickstarter thing in their own right, you know. <laughs> By the way, you know, just going to do this. Fifteen thousand dollar production of you know for for you know for the eighty or a hundred of you guys who want gamer pads. I'm just going to do this entire you know <laughs> I, I I will probably need to constrain myself. But right now there's a lot of cool um, there's a lot of cool things, and I think I think the biggest thing is definitely going to be and then there's going to be some interactive things um, too. Always we have the god tier levels where it's like. How can you be a part of the book? And since this one's just beginning, I really have more room to add right. um, add people in and kind of make that make that potential. And I'm honored that people want to be a part of the story and they're okay with a little bit of fantasy bending of their name. And uh, so, so yeah, I'm really I'm really pumped on this way. I think we have 180 followers on the on the link right now, and we're gonna I'm gonna try to boost up to about two or three hundred, and then um, and then launch it. Yeah, July July 19th. July nineteenth. That's exciting yeah. stuff. And so, and after this, because I'm I'm guessing I'm just going to make an educated guess here, Matt. That because there is four levels, is this 
going to be four books in uh, the Realm Walker series? That's the plan. The plan okay. is uh, four books, just to kind of like get people as an intro into the world. Um, mm -hmm. The other option is 25 books. No, I just can't have this. <laughs> the other option is never ending. Um, each of the books to, is looking to be like, the plan was originally to do 300 page books. And right. I was like, oh, just these like little 300 page books. Um, whereas these Knife's Edge and the Run Sagas, these 700 um, page behemoths, not quite even Xandar, you know, I know they're, they're even, they're even way bigger, Robert. And then, but um, yeah, I'm thinking about 350 to 450 pages for each book. Um, and then four, four books right now. Um, but we'll see. I think the plan is as soon as I finish Sky Thief, I'm going to go right back into book five. Um, but it's tough. It's one of those things that's super tough because I'm so excited for the second book of Sky Thief and I want people to get it, you know, like it's a series. And so I want people to be like, oh my, what's going to happen next? It leaves on a really cool note. So it's, it's if I could be two people and write at the same time, it'd be amazing. <laughs> All right. Do you see, a, do, do you, do you foresee, I'm just kind of wondering just from like, you know, you know, putting on your prediction hat, do you see as Venn diagram goes for like Ronin Saga and then Realm Walkers, do you see a lot of overlap or do you m maybe predict that there's going to be a, a very significant group of people that will just read the Realm Walker series? And if there's any people from the Ronin Saga side that will just stick with Ronin Saga. Hmm. I, if I had to put on my prediction hat, I would say that obviously all my Ronin Saga fans, I think are going to easily bleed over. Right. Um, but a lot of those fans, it's hard to recapture because it's like, right. you know, I have my email list, you know, with my, you know, my newsletter and all those people are going to be like, yeah, I'm in uh, for yeah. the most part. But there's uh, hundreds of thousands of copies that have been sold to people that I'll never see again that may never <laughs> You know that are they'll you know I don't know if they're ever gonna know the realm walkers is out there. I think Audible might push it to them, but I think that I think it's gonna be a little just. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be. I think the Venn diagram is gonna be like twenty or thirty percent with a lot of my fans, but I think it's really gonna open up if it's done the way I think it is done. Right. I think the realm walkers thing could. I think if progression fantasy is the algorithm that I think it is. Um, I think it'd be even bigger than the Ron Saga, which yeah. would be really interesting to me, which would be great because then it would hopefully that 20 or 30% of those people who read the Realm Walkers will go on to be like, where's, where's, where's this go? Where's this, how's this leading the Far Haven? Um, Cause it kind of has a prequel-esque kind of feel. So you're like, well, when, when the Realm Walkers ends, where does Far Haven take off? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so there, there was a there is a there is did this so here so with the idea of creating Sky Thief and also the Realm Walker series, did this change your outline for your meta plot for your Ronin saga at all? Uh yeah. Yeah, it kind of wow. did. Okay. Yeah, it okay. did. It, it kind of did set up things a little differently. Um it brought it to a bigger scale too, because far okay. even pretty big scale um but it, it brought it more cosmere it brought it more universal and brought it more like well how what is what are the ramifications of of when gray and team save farhaven oh, fingers crossed and stop i'm not going to spoil anyone who hasn't gotten too far into it but um you know they have to kind of unite the nine kingdoms and and and, and stop this kind of rising evil but what is what does that have to do with Sky Thief? And what is that what's the bigger ramifications of that? So I I think as a whole, um it's yeah, it's 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 changed it's changed what it's changed what's gonna happen for, for Gray and Company entirely. And I think it's gonna be fun too, because I I'm I'm seeing the main characters, and I think I mentioned this before off camera, is that I'm seeing some of the higher tier characters, these characters who are going to Sanctum and stuff like that, how they will bleed over into Farhaven. And so it's like, um, I'm trying to plan out, I'm trying to plan out what those characters are going to do and say, and uh, yeah, I'm being a little nebulous, but, <laughs> 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 a little mysterious, but. yeah, it has, it has changed the plot. 
Okay. As you, as your writing style, have you have you have you been deliberate in still keeping a writing style for the both series, or or have you been able to deliberately tweak it a tweak tweak Sky Thief a little bit to make it feel a little bit more different than Ronin Saga because it's the same author's voice in a way. Is there a way that you were deliberate in tweaking anything? Yeah. Yeah. I was a little deliberate with it. I mean, some of it's just evolving as a writer. So you kind of like, okay, well this reads a little like a more advanced tides of fate or a more advanced book five. And um, there's just that, you know, as, as you kind of grow and change, but there's a lot more humor, I'd say. I think there's okay. a lot of humor in, in Far Haven, but mostly it's done through two main characters, through Darius and and Helix, and you know those are the kind of the sassy, irreverent characters. But in this one, I think I tried to really, it's woven through everything. I mean, it's basically a character who falls into an entirely new world, so everything is blowing his mind, you know. Sure. Um, so it's like you know, there's a scene in the first like 20 pages after he falls into this new world that there's like a giant. Uh, bunny that hops out of this like forest you know and it's only to find out that it's, there's just giant creatures in general it's a giant spider that comes out and wraps up in webs and you know then they have to run right. and like of course you know and so I, I i was reading it with my um beta beta readers my alpha readers and i was like I, there was the first 10 pages you know i i think i have some some moments in far haven but i think this one really truly i was i was cracking up you know <laughs> um maybe i have a very easy sense of humor but i was uh, you know, we were reading the first 10 pages, like kind of together on like a skate Patreon thing. And I was like, you know, I was, I was tearing up because it was like, it's, it was fun to take it self, you know, seriously as a whole. Um, but really um, interject this character being like, like flipping tables because he's just so, so, you know, gobsmacked by this, this entirely different world. Right. So you had, so now I'm gonna, and I'm just wondering, is this like a Russian doll situation where there's more layers? Because you said he, your main character came from a post-apocalyptic world. Is there another genre of series that you could potentially write then that takes place before that? That takes place in what happened in that world that their main character came from? I could, yeah. I've never. I did. Ex I did write the backstory to that, and I wrote like okay. what. I think what's going to end up happening is just going to be more told like vignettes and like flashbacks right. and things like that in that world. Um, it could be a post-apocalyptic. I could have three genres. I'm trying to like <laughs> kind of like like gradually shift. I'm like, hey, you guys, you guys like fantasy? You like progression fantasy? It's fantasy, but people rank up, and it's pretty more like so it's just a little right. cool, like you know more. But I I feel like um, I'd like to think of myself as a versed author. Um, but I think that sounds scary to try something entirely like, by the way, here's yeah. post apocalyptic horror or something, yeah. you know, like, you know, um, but it would be cool to, to kind of explore that. When I was writing, I was having a lot of fun and I cut out 60 pages of what the post apocalyptic world was. Cause right. I was like, it's not super relevant to this. Um, but it was fun to write and it, and it provides a lot of his motivation and background. You know, his, He's following this trillionaire who basically is this, you know, this kind of, he's carved out from this world, this guy named Marcus Hallen, who is Hallen Enterprises, kind of like the, the bad version of Wayne Enterprises. And he's, uh, um, and so his sister is, is, is essentially, it's just kind of, it, it's almost kind of this way that like this guy created this mortality drug and then they all ended up it's kind of ruined the world because everyone's become shells of kind of their former selves. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a huge, huge background that I wrote. And then I was like, wait a second, that's not really like <laughs> super relevant. I think it's just going to like be told through context. Uh, <laughs> about how it's like, you know, his sister was, you know, became this shell of a person through this immortality drug that ruined her. And it was Marcus Allen's fault. And, and now he's, He's, you know, now he has vendetta against Marcus Allen to, who, who ruined his sister and his, and the world who basically carved out this world who, who kind of soaked up kind of like a vampire soaking up the blood from, from all of the, this world and then drops into a brand new world. And then this Marcus Allen character now is in the world of, uh, of Heron, of, of Sky Thief. And you're like, man, this guy, does this guy just go to different universes and just, you know, soaks it all up and, uh, 
and and so now it's it's pretty it's pretty fun. It was pretty fun to write that, and I'm like, oh, I do want to write a side story about about Marcus Allen and how he how he, how he his pre pre sky thief moments. But um, <laughs> at this point, I'd probably just end up writing sixty five different things and not finishing it. Really, so. <laughs> so last time you were on, your website was RonanSaga.com. It is now matt-wolf.com correct so is that it that's mostly because now you have a second series yeah it's because the second series and you know if there's a third series ever you know um, one day um i just been looking at like for so long i thought i was the ron and the ronin saga and i realized that mm. that is my baby and that like i don't want anyone to think that there's in any way it's not really the forefront of my mind even with sky thief um i still think of the run song i mean i just sold you know i was just at denver selling the run song you know it's just like right. that's who i'm talking to that's my core fan base that's like um those are the characters i love and this is really if anything kind of a an, an appendix and a, a you know homage to the run saga but then i was like you know brand sanderson patrick rothis all these guys you know they they're they have a main series um but I want people to be like, you know, like, oh, this was this was written by Matt Wolf, and, um, right. and kind of branch out from that. So, so you have on your so people can actually buy your books from your website as well. Yeah, yeah, they can buy the whole set. There's a set deal; they can actually get signed copies. Uh, wow. Okay. To, which is like a lot of times I go to these conventions and I'll sell a bunch of books, and everyone's like, "Well, how do I get the next book signed?" Um, right. I'm like, well, you know, just go on matt-wolf.com and you know check out paperbacks or hardcovers or and then you'll see, yeah, and they're pretty much like they're even cheaper than uh, most Amazon. So it's just right. a way yeah. of like, um, yeah, and then I do like the set collections, forty nine for the entire paperback set, and I just That's want really people to be deal. able to get. And then of course it's great for me too. Um, it's kind of taken off lately because for a long time people were like, I'll order on Amazon, and now uh, and now people are like, wait a second, like. I can get the signed books on on the website, and I can get the merchant on that. Right. Um, and of course, you know, as an author, we always get a bigger cut when it's directly from us. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. And yeah, you can get, and that's a pretty good deal too. You get the hardcover paperback, hardcover plus paperback novellas for 150 bucks, which would retail for 230 bucks. Exactly. So. All four novellas and all are all yeah four novellas and four hardcovers so it's yeah it's pretty it's pretty good people will be like at the convention i do the the hardcover set i think for like so, something around there people are like are you sure and i'm like i mean yeah like the trick is i have you for nine books once once you're once you're in on the first four you know then then i got you hooked right so, and they and you and if they order them from their website, you'll sign them too, right? Is that what you yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, okay, I sign a little book on the website, and then um, some yeah. people will individually message me when you go to like the checkout, and then you'll be able right. to like, like if you want it signed specifically a certain way. Um, yeah. But generally, I'll just sign them and yeah. ship them out. Nice. So Sky, th and so I also want to talk about your Patreon. Yeah, you have an amazing Patreon. Thank uh, you. Do you want to talk people uh, briefly about your your? You have seven levels too, so there is something for everyone on here, and I think there it's is. very affordable. And you got some really good, um, really good ways to you, to help out your patron your your patrons. You got some really high quality things for them as Thank well. You. I'm I'm I like I get chills. I'm just so like honored. <laughs> like when I started the Patreon, I was so like. Oh yeah, like you know, if you guys want to support me and um, and see where it goes, and the first first Patreon ever was like, it's like, oh wow, this is like a year and a half ago. I was like, really okay, you guys, you guys want to hear more some insider stuff, and now it's grown, and right. um, yeah, so I anything from a dollar a month, if you just want to support, um, you actually can see. So even at a dollar a month, um, you get to see all mo about sixty seventy percent of the posts which are a bunch of insider posts. I love to like right. you know, show artwork that's never been done before or chapters that people may never see or just chapters ahead of time. Um, the patrons are super involved in because they're my core fan base on what do you guys like between these different covers? What do you like between these different names? 
Um, they're some of the ones that helped me come up with Realm Walkers. Um, and so it's a very interactive community. And then uh, $3, um, I just follow you on social media. $5 is one of the main ones where people can actually get insider chapters. Um, cool. So yeah, I, I will deliver specific about once a week, uh, to twice a week, depending on how quickly the chapters are going, I'll upload a chapter to the, to the Patreon. You'll be able to get it. Um, and then, and then I make an ebook available at the, um, Arbiter at the $10 level. And then one okay. of the most popular levels, um, 25 is the Ronin is where you become in every book. Now your name is in the back and the acknowledgements. Uh, but dra so the two main ones that have kind of really taken off is, is dragon. So we have, uh, I think, yeah, we have eight out of, um, 10. So we have two left for right. that. And basically they get first editions for life. Right. You're right. Yep. I remember so talking about that your last time on. Yep. It's pretty cool. Um, and I, and I always release those even ahead of the Kickstarter. Um, and they'll be able to like, and, and I'm really, I'm thankful for everyone. And we'll, I'll do some kind of insider dragon stuff too, where I'll do Q and A's. We did a Q and A last month. And so I even had, so I had everyone on and we did a, uh, like a raffle. Uh, so I have like some merch that will never see the light of day. I had like a goblet. And so I had <laughs> people guessing like, all right, whoever can name the most Ronin saga swords, uh, gets the, gets the goblet. And so <laughs> that's you know, awesome. One of my, it was awesome. Annette one. I was like, well, you guys can't check the book. And then like, a few people like uh, I think Annette did it, and then I was like, okay, well now now see how many can you get checking the books, um, and it was it was cool. One of my dragon back as well. And then you got your god tier. Yeah, this is a huge. huge <laughs> it's level. insane. I am so I don't even know. I feel like I feel like I'm blown away. I have two people who are god tier right now, and I am I just I every day I'm like, you guys are the best, John and Rob, or and they just all right. Just so cool. Um, so basically, God tier gets you everything. Um, yeah, I think I'm like, yeah, you. This is crazy. <laughs> you are crazy. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so they get the one of the one thousand printing. So the first two books, um, or three or four or five books, or however many dragon tiers, then we get the literal first edition. So um, each one's gold, kind of been signed, um, wow. n numbered there. Um, they're a recurring character in the book. Uh, so I work them into the saga. Um, awesome. yeah, which is pretty, which is pretty fun and awesome because they're so interactive. I actually both, uh, for my God tears actually. So, it, and I think it's just, it's just such a family. Like I know that sounds right. kind of old, but it's like a, it's my Patreon fam. Right. So, so, um, and I, I think I, even sometimes they're like, Hey, you, you guys, they even mentioned to me sometimes like you don't utilize us as much as you could. I'm like, you know, I, I always want to feel like I'm giving more than I'm getting, but um, I definitely feel very honored. Um, so, right. yeah, I'm going to keep that going, and I'm going to really try to keep as many. And I'm always open if someone's like, hey, look, I would love, like, a m more monthly Q&As, um, or I'd love more inside chapters, or I think you should, you know, publish a compendium and usually push towards that. I'm also doing um, more short stories for my Patreons. Because okay. I think that's going to be one of the most popular things. It's like, hey, look, we really want to hear a backstory on Faye. I'm like, all right, okay, like, you guys are awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll spend, like, you know, three or four weeks uh, doing, like, right. a little 30, 40 page thing. Um, but yeah, the moral stories, I'm, 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 I love uh, hearing what else, what, what directions, what else can I provide. Um, so I'm always trying to think of new ways for that. But right. Mostly. I'm that's thinking. awesome. Yeah. So you have, so, Sky Thief is coming out. The Kickstarter is launching as of this as of this recording, uh, Ju July nineteenth. Correct. So congratulations um, for getting another Kickstarter going out here. I but know. This is I this know. is fun Kickstarter, stuff. Every, this is exciting. Yeah, I know. And all the illustrations are ready, and the book is ready, and everything. We're gonna have yeah, we got the physical copies, and and uh, I think this is gonna be definitely definitely one of the biggest ones yet it's crazy because i think we hit some pretty cool goals for book four and and mm -hmm. all that which makes sense you know everyone's like i want to dive back in but a book right. one of a new series 
you know, I think um, last one was the audiobook. The audiobook alone of Tides of Fate, I think it was like 18,000 or 20,000. Um, right. But I think this one's going to be huge. Um, I really am excited to see how many uh, new readers and returning readers we can get. Um, and so I think I have, I have some pretty lofty goals on it. And it's cool, too, that we so much of it is already, a lot of it's created. Some of it's really like, I'm curious, what else do you guys want to see? Do you want to see, you know, yeah, that gold foil embossed and this and how many more illustrations. Um, but I love that. I've been trying to accrue as much already behind the scenes. So when we launch, everyone's like, oh my God, I get a book with, you know, 52 different illustrations and uh, 16 different um, styles and designs. And so, um, so yeah, I'm trying to provide as much as I can on this one. So I'm, I'm excited for it. All right. Cool. Well, thanks for coming back on, Matt. Yeah, really thank great. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, listen. So, when you get book five coming out, or when you get book, or when you get book two coming out, depending if you, you come come back on, and we'll, we'll chat some more. This has been. Great. I would, I would love that. This is, yeah. You, you ask the best questions, and I, uh, <laughs> I always have a blast. And now that I'm a friend of the show, I feel. Honored. That's right. You made friend of the show. Yeah. I made friend of the show. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thank you so much, Marty. It's it's so fun to like to to chat with those two guys. You know the, the father son duo energy. Yeah. I met them. Yeah, I met them. Like what? Uh, like six or six years ago, I could mention like, yeah, we're thinking about writing a fantasy book. Well, I'm like, you know, I just kind of just you know, like next thing I know, they're they're crushing it. Yeah, um, yeah, they're the, they're they're great. They're always just selfless too. They're always like, hey, you know, like here's this awesome podcaster. You yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you couldn't get on that one, so you came on my podcast. Yeah, instead. I know exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, Where is he? And I'm like, <laughs> I'll take the backup though, you know. I'll take the backup. <laughs> all right, all right, Matthew. Let me get this intro and we'll jump right into it. Here we go. <laughs>